there's, there's a lot of bad nutritional epidemiology out there, and, and a, a way a lot of the science is going is rather than to look at these single nutrients, to look at dietary pattern. And so one way of doing that is looking at indices or an index of dietary health, and one of those is called the, the Healthy Eating Index. And so um, we, uh, Colleen Laprell and I, started looking at the NHANES database, uh, and all that data is available in the NHANES, so we were said, well, no one's ever looked at the NHANES and looked at the relationship between diet and hearing. So this is the first study to do that. We were able to do a beautiful analysis and, and demonstrate that indeed there seems to be a very significant relationship between dietary health and, and at least hearing thresholds in a, a cross-sectional type of uh, manner. Um, obviously we don't have longitudinal data from this. We can't say that there's a cause and effect. All we can say is that there is indeed a significant association. We see that association in males and females and we still see that in different age groups even when we correct for other factors that can influence um, um, susceptibility such as you know smoking, um, uh, cardiovascular health, age, um, and all the other standard things that you put in um, as, as covariates. The next phase of that research would then to begin to look at some longitudinal um, studies. Um, of, of course, that requires funding. So the, the way that I would plan out would be to do a five-year and ten-year um, points. So you look at um, you would follow a group of people for five years and ten years, just basically five-year increments, um, at least over a ten-year period, to see if you can see any type of effect on um, progression of hearing loss. Uh, the work from uh, Judy Dubno out of Medical University of South Carolina, they suggest the um, average age-related hearing loss is approximately about 1 dB a year, about 0.8 to 1 dB a year. So um, that, that's what we would want to look at. And so we'd have to determine our sample size based on trying to demonstrate some type of reduction of that. Um, and then we would follow those subjects over that time frame, and basically um, they would um, indicate um, whether this was a healthy eating group or a poor eating group. Now that's difficult because diet is very variable. You can look at patterns in someone's diet. Um, look at, for example, you could look at someone that was vegetarian versus non-vegetarian. You could look at someone that followed, say, the, um, uh, uh, what's the Mediterranean diet versus, you know, um, Aiken's diet or something like that. And then the, 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 those people followed that over an extended period of time, you could then look to see if there was a relationship. I think there's definitely going to be an influence, no matter if that longitudinal study is not done, um, that at least there's definitely going to be a relationship there, and that at least provides some evidence to begin bringing that into the conversation with our patients. You don't have to give specific advice. You can give, we recommend eating a healthy diet and exercising. If there's any concerns about diet, talk to a dietitian. Um, some basic recommendations are to um, increase their um, uh, micronutrient intake by eating more vegetables, and more fruits, and reducing saturated fats. Now, that's information they're going to get from every healthcare professional. But now there's another reason that's related to their susceptibility to hearing loss. And so, if that's a factor, um, I think it's one we need to start bringing into our conversations.